telling women that they don't have to sleep with their husbands. What's going on with this crazy rabbi? Rabbis are telling women that they have to sleep with their husbands every time their husband wants. And coming that crazy rabbi and telling them, no, it's not true. Your husband's not supposed to tell you when to sleep with them and when not to. The mitzvah midoraita calls onata, mean her time. Onata lo tigra. The obligation, the mitzvah is on the man that if the wife she wants him to be with her, so she is not, so he is not allowed to refuse. If the wife wants to be with the husband, so the husband is not allowed to refuse. That's the halacha. So why does Rabbi sense guiding the, the, the brides, the kalot, that even if they don't want to be with their husbands, they must? Where is that written? In hell? No, it's not a joke. Where is it written? Where the hell is written? Is it written? In Shulchan Aruch for sure it's not written. That the husband allowed to force his wife if she doesn't want. The Shulchan Aruch is saying it calls Bnei Anusa. It means that that woman being forced, being raped. So what are we talking about? It's not allowed, right? Right. You're free. So I just said it in one of the classes. So there was a problem. Because some woman came back home and said, Okay, I don't want it anymore. And it's okay. She doesn't have to, you know, it's her body. She's allowed not to do things that she doesn't want to do. It's a free world. It's not ISIS. We're not raping women because we want to. That's not what we're doing. So that woman just said, I don't want to. So that rabbi spoke with that person and that person asked him, what should he do? And now this rabbi put those crazy ideas into my wife's head and now she thinks that, that if she don't want to be with me, so she allow not to be with me, so it's okay. Weird rabbi, right? When I was in Los Angeles, so one of the people that were talking before the class, uh, in, uh, 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 inviting me, introducing me, so he said, this is a unique rabbi, he speaks from the heart. I said, Givald, if it's unique that the rabbi speaks from the heart, Givald, it's complete darkness. But I don't care. I don't care. Maybe this is why Rav Shalom told me not to be a rabbi, that I'm going to be able to, to stay straight. So, I was explaining that rabbi, my approach, my approach. The mitzvah of Onata and mitzvah by the Shulchan Aruch and what the Shulchan Aruch is allowing and not allowing, permitting, not permitting. And I said, and okay, so now if the woman, there is a mitzvah, that mitzvah calls, it's written, it calls, it calls chiyuv lel tvila. That in the night of the mikveh, there is some kind of an obligation, a chiyuv. That the couple will be together, it's a chiyuv, it's like it's a must, they have to be together in the night that she went to the mikveh. So they asked me about it, what you're going to do, what, what, what with that chiyuv? So I said, okay, look, the chiyuv is on who? I'm just asking. The obligation of mitzvah ona, now that they're going to be together, it's a chiyuv, it's an obligation, there is no obligation here. What is the obligation? The obligation is on the man that if his wife, she wants to be with him, that he will be there for her. That's the only chiyuv, that's the only obligation. Even if you're going to say mitzvah purvu to bring children, women are not com commanded, are not committed to that. Women don't have to bring children if they don't want to. She's not violating no rule. The men, they are. They are obligated. 
a man must get married and have children and if he cannot so he needs to find a way and needs to go to rabbis and to find a, because he is obligated to bring children to the world the Torah is committing that men to bring children but women they're not obligated even on that mitzvah to bring children they're not obligated so when you say when there is that obligation so it cannot be chiyuv to obligate the women, the wife. How can it be that the wife suddenly she's got a chiyuv if she's not obligated at all to that mitzvah? She's not obligated. So there is no chiyuv lel mitzvah for her. So what is the chiyuv? There is a chiyuv. There is something that obligates them to be together in that night. What is that thing? Probably on the husband to satisfy his wife, to make, to please her, his wife, to make her happy. The chiyuv cannot be on, on, the, on the women. The obligation cannot be on the women. The obligation must be that if the woman she wants, so then the husband is obligated because there is no other obligation. You cannot say she must do something that if she doesn't want to do, no one can force her to do because Midoraita, the Torah, beginning of that, of, that, of that question, of that obligation, of that situation, of that mitzvah, is on the husband to be there for her if she wants him. So if she doesn't want him, there's nothing to talk about. And the world is sick, and people can't understand it. So that's very important rabbi, that he is very, very, very wise and intelligent and nice. And so he asked me what was I saying in that class and how can it be that, that it's been revealed like that. And I explained to him my opinion and, and, and he accepted my, my, my approach and he said, you're right, you're right. And he was honest enough to, to understand the difficulty of the generation. If you will say now that the Rebetzins that are teaching and guiding the women to be with their husbands against their will, let's say that it's not so horrible like that I'm describing it. Let's say that those Rebetzins are just understanding that it's good for the relationship of the couple, that the couple will be together. Okay, I can understand. So let's say that they're just saying, hey, don't be so hard. And even if you don't feel like it so much, be nice, it's your husband, and, and you enjoy, be together. Okay, I can understand that. So now we're saying because that your husband is weak, because that your husband needs to feel loved and feel appreciated and feel like he's, I don't know what, he's got in his mind. So understand him and be with him. Accept it. Great. So we understand the difficulty of the men and we have mercy for them. And we're guiding the women to try to show compassion and love and, and, and to be supportive and to be a good friend. Great, wonderful. Why now if a w woman feels the same, that she doesn't want, that she doesn't have the power for that, that she's angry at her husband, why that we won't going to understand her? Why are we going to understand the men that are suffering and we understand, oh, yeah, you're suffering, okay, we, get, we got it, we understand you, it's hard for you, we understand it, we're ex accepting it, it's okay. Why can't we understand the woman from the other side that she doesn't want? Why that cannot be okay also? So, I cannot stand those things and I'm not cooperating with those things. And I'm not allowing those things. And if you want to stay my students, you're going to have to start working on your midot and never to force your wives to do anything against their will because it's rape and it's not kosher and it's not human. And there is no connection to God if you're able to force someone to do things against his will especially not things that depends in his intimacy, in his body. It's 100% off the, off the right way. Not like God wants it to be. 
God wants people to love each other, to give hope to each other, to understand each other, to care about each other. Now you have weaknesses, you need to, sh to receive love, you feel hurt, you want someone to hug you, to show you some love, great. Why won't you be nice then? Sit with her, be nice, be friendly, smile to her, be cute, be good. And then everything is cool. Why I need to force? You really want to be with her? Great! So be, be, be a good friend, be friendly, be nice. Be, be nice, be sweet, tell her compliments, hug her, tell her I love you, you're so sweet, you're so... You're gonna be good friends! Why you need to bring your rabbi to help you to force your wife to do something against her will? Poof! Why, why are we so crazy? Why are we so sick? You want her to be nice to you? Be nice to her, she will be nice to you! Why she doesn't want to go to the mikveh? Why she doesn't want to be with you? Because you're disgusting, because you're not nice, because you don't have no manners, because you're always insulting and rebuking and criticizing and you're just... It's not fun to be with you. So what do you want from her? Why can't you understand it and to do tshuva? Go work on your midot, go be a human being, just start being nice. Start giving compliments. And be, because you need it, okay, be selfish, but at least be nice. <laughs>